what's up guys super here um and we are less than 24 hours from the major beginning and it's been a few days since i posted my initial prediction video so i just wanted to post an updated video where i'll talk about my predictions if anything's changed the news that we also have of the teams that have qualified uh for phase one if they have any news that's relevant and i just wanted to highlight a couple of players for you guys to keep an eye on if you are following this or you just want to know who to root for who might be a, a player that you're unfamiliar with um and of course i if you don't know always co-stream the majors uh, my channel twitch.tv super will have drops so you can earn drops just by watching the major along with me kind of in the same format uh on my channel so i hope to see some of you there Remember, I will be actually at the major as I am also the coach for Sonics and we are in phase two. So I'll kind of be co-streaming around that, but I will be doing my best to co-stream as much as we can. And I will have drops and I will even be co-streaming from the event uh, when I have the time. So I hope to see some of you in my stream. But real quick, let's just jump to this. So as you know, these were my initial predictions where I had G2, Chiefs, Black Dragons, and Falcons. Uh, since then, we did learn that... Um, Uzi will be filling in for uh, Tristan on CL4L. I don't think that really changes my opinion on CL4L. I think they're a solid team. Um, the problem they have is that Tristan is a very good player. He was an important player for them. And Uzi is a player who I think people believe has a lot of talent, but he's more on the content creator side. He hasn't played comp in a long time. This is still a team that has essentially no... Uh, land experience no international experience and i think that's just that's just a lot to overcome on the side of falcons i, I believe their coach was unable to travel to the event uh mad skills but everybody else will be able to play so they should be able to uh, field their normal roster um which i think goes back into my initial prediction of i think they're going to squeak out of uh phase one and then with alpha team they have two players who i mentioned could not play They've got some subs. Um, unfortunately, I'm just not expecting much from them. I think even if they had their real team, the LATAM region uh, has kind of struggled at the international majors. I think having two players you now have to sub in uh, is, is not going to help that, uh, help that much. So I'm going to stick with my initial predictions. And then I saw some of you saying, well, when are you going to post your playoff predictions, right? And the reason I haven't posted it is because I'm going to post a video after the play-in stage so we'll know the initial uh, brackets of how it works. Because at the majors, it goes into a Swiss format where it's not a guaranteed bracket of who you play. So we have to kind of make predictions as we go once we know the round one matchups because it could completely change who teams play as a Swiss stage just goes off of um, the record rather than just like a straightforward bracket. So I don't want to predict like two teams that go 3-0 and where if I'm predicting it that way, they could potentially play for the 3-0 and game because you get points based off of getting the right positions. So the reason I'm waiting to re reveal the playoffs and then the finals predictions is because... I want to see those first round matchups first so that we can predict as we go and try to have as accurate as we can, at least within my own predictions. Um, so I will be posting a video for that, but it will not be until after the play, play ends, which will probably be November 7th or, or November 8th. So just keep a lookout on my channel for that. Uh, getting into the players I think that are worth keeping an eye on. Um, and, and this is, you know, win or lose, right? On CL for L, I think Adam is a player you should you should keep an eye out on. Uh, this is a guy who was on Sonic's last stage. It just didn't work out, but not because of him. He was a very good player for us. And if you look at their qualifiers um, stats, he was plus 20, about even on entry, their highest rated player by far. Uh, he played entry, he played Goyo, he plays all kinds of roles. Um, and he's been a player who has been close to making majors before. Right. If you look back, um, and I don't know if CGG actually kept track of this because they kind of just randomly stopped uh, doing stuff for a while. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, doesn't look like they did. But Adam qualified. Adam was in the finals of the EWC quals on Sonics to make to make EWC. 
did well didn't make it he was in the finals of the lcq to make the last major on sonics did well didn't make it so this is his first time actually making it through the qual and he's had a couple of chances to do it and i think he's a really exciting player who has potential to turn you know cl4l are an unsigned tier two team he's a guy who definitely has potential to get back into tier one so i'm excited to what he can kind of do in his you know his land debut um the next player i want to highlight is ask on black dragons some of you probably know ask if you follow siege he was on liquid for a very long time he's got over a hundred thousand dollars in career earnings but the reason i think he's a player to keep his, your eye on is because if you look at black dragons they're going to be looking to him for for leadership right he is the guy on that team who was on a great team he has a lot of high level competition in tier one and if you look at the qualifiers he was plus 16 plus seven on entry two clutches one of the highest rated players overall and even if you look at the brazil stage itself keep in mind black dragons before the lcq literally were last place and did not win a game right but even with all of that uh, going against them him and horny Tao were still pretty decent performance i mean going negative three and going negative four when you literally lost every single match and you have a guy in your team negative 40 averaging 0.3 kills around like those are super numbers right so ask is a guy to me to keep an eye on if black dragons are going to get out of stage one it's going to be on the back of him a bit um and i think he's a good player and i think he could even use this as a chance to maybe potentially get himself on a better team long term because you know he didn't the falling out on liquid wasn't great for him and i think this is you know he's been showing that hey you know you got to take this guy serious um and then we're going to kind of go with a obvious name um i don't know why i just keep clicking brazil i guess it's because it's brazilian but a player to watch to me is alamo uh he was the highest rated player on g2 in the quals he was plus 18 plus four on entry with three um clutches if you go back even to just the EU league itself, he has one of the highest pl rated players in the league. He's plus 23, plus six on entry with 10 plants. So it's like really impressive numbers from him. I think he gets a lot of hate because he, I mean, you know, he he's a big personality. Um, he's got a lot of fans and a lot of haters. Um, and because the fans of G2 expect so much from them, that they you know they kind of don't give him his due because the team doesn't like you know if the team's not doing amazing it's his fault but if you look at like you know they, they don't have it anymore where you could sort like this because they're actually yeah they do but i mean if you just look at eu for the past year he's a second he's higher rated than shiko for the past year and he's got 15 plants and he's got eight clutches right if you bring that to tier one it stays the same Obviously, you haven't had LAN. You know, if you go to LAN, maybe he falls off a bit because honestly, G2 just haven't really been making a lot of the LANs or performing well. But within his own region, he's consistently a top player. So that means he has to be a guy that you want to watch. Uh, and then I want to go to a guy who... Uh, and this is kind of awkward because um, CGG didn't even keep stats for his region. But I'm going to go with Jigsaw on uh, Chiefs. He was on Fnatic and Koi. He was on Bliss before that, right? It didn't work out in EU. And he went back to back to Australia and won the stage, right? So he beat his former team. He got some international experience. He has international experience overall. You know, he, he has made majors when he was on Bliss. And I think Chiefs, to me, are a team that are I'm confident are going to make it out of that stage one. I think he's a player to keep an eye on because he is very skilled mechanically. I think he's shown that he does have potential. And I think he's a guy where if Chiefs do well, he's going to be a big reason on uh, on that team. And then finally, I'm going to go with Anaton. I, I will say I don't think Anaton has necessarily been the most impressive statistically. And everybody knows Anaton if you follow Siege. CAG do make basically every event. It's this they kind of struggle at the events. But he was once again the best player on CAG in their region. Uh, 1.1 rating plus 14. But the real reason I say Anaton is because he has always been notorious for being one of, if not the best shield players in the world. And we are in a shield meta. So if you want to see, and, and to be honest, I haven't watched a ton of CAG. But if you want to see what a potential real shield player looks like, 
this might be the guy to check it out because even before shields became overpowered in the eyes of you know many players he was overpowered on shields we actually i remember playing him at the first major sonics made uh in mexico and he was drop shotting us on montane and clash and that was when those were not even like high played operators so i'm kind of interested to see what he's going to do I think if CAG have a chance to make it out of uh, the stage one, it's going to be because they're able to kind of utilize his shield play and abuse the fact that shields right now are arguably the most broken operator on the attacker side. So, um, like I said, players to watch for me, Adam on CL4L, Ask on Black Dragons, Alamau on G2, Jigsaw on Chiefs, and Anaten on CAG. I'm going to stick with the predictions I have. And then once we get through the play-ins, I'm going to come back with my playoff predictions once we can see round one so we can simulate the bracket here. And if you can't see this website, I know maybe my camera blocks it. It's majors.im, and you can kind of go along once it's, it's uh, out there. But yeah, guys, remember, I will be co-streaming every single match. Well, not every single. I will be co-streaming as many matches as I can before I go to the event and at the event. And I'll also be coaching at the event, so I hope you root for my team, Sonics. I will say, just be forewarned, when I'm making these predictions, it's going to be a little biased because I'm not going to pick us to lose, obviously. Um, but yeah, good luck in your brackets if you are um, following along. I hope you enjoy the major. I hope the Sonics play well, and I hope you root for us. Uh, I will make another video on the 7th or 8th with my predictions for the playoffs for this. Um, and hopefully I catch you in my stream on twitch.tv slash super with drops for the entirety of the major. See you guys later.